Well, welcome again, everyone watching here and on our YouTube channel. For the last, I think I calculated, 43 weeks, we've been running a Facebook Live service of one sort or another. First, it was, it was live from our backyard or in our, our lounge room. Uh, we got to pre-recording some things and, and got a bit better at that. We, um, Michael Thorne was doing that for a while and loading that up uh, on Facebook and now uh, for the last probably half of the year, 20 weeks or so, my daughter Jocelyn has been doing that. Pre-record it, send it to her um, and yeah, we get it out live on Facebook each Sunday morning and between 80 probably the least, up to 200 people watch that service on Facebook uh, sometime after that Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. So we're taking a break from Facebook over the holidays, so we'll be here Sunday by Sunday. I know a lot of churches aren't actually meeting over, the, over this, this, the 27th and even next week. I know a number of churches even aren't in, even meeting in January. Uh, but we're continuing to meet. There'll still be a service and that will still go on YouTube as well uh, on the YouTube channel, it just won't be on Facebook. I find this week sort of of the year an interesting one because it's sort of in between. Christmas is over and for most people, I mean some people celebrate Christmas afterwards just the way their families go, but for most people you've already celebrated Christmas. You've had your food, you've had too much to eat. Um, but we're not quite into the new year yet. And, and most people I speak to want to get rid of 2020. You know, that, that will be, you know, good riddance. Um, someone said at least in 2021 that we can say hindsight is 2020 vision. And that's the dad joke for today. So, yeah, we can get rid of 2020. But for this week, we're sort of in between. We've done with Christmas, but we're not quite done with the year and able to celebrate New Year's yet. And the title of my message today is, is that from the land in between. This, this period, this place, this situation that we often find ourselves that is in between one thing and another. We've left one thing and we go to another. I remember thinking this when, when I was younger. One of my earliest memories was graduating and I had a full graduation in Bundaberg where I was born from kindergarten. And you go from kindergarten to school and there's a transition. At the end of that you go, oh, I don't know what that's going to look like. And then you transition from primary school to high school. But in between you go, what does that look like? And then high school to university and university to getting a job. But in between the one thing and the next thing, there's this in-between period where you go, what will that look like? What does that feel like for me? In one sense, as a Christian, the whole of life is the land in between. Because we've come out of darkness and into the light, and one day we will be in the promised land. We will be in that place where there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain but for now, it's in between. Sometimes that in between is more temporary and it's, we finished one job and we're looking for something else. Or a health thing has come unexpectedly and we didn't expect to be in this situation, but until we know what that's going to look like in the future, we've got to deal with this uncertainty. And there's a whole lot of just these things, areas of life where we go from one thing to another and we're living in this land in between. We're out of one thing, which may be a bad thing. And we haven't got to the new normal. We don't know what that will look like yet. And as that quote I've got in the notes said, said this, the land in between is about transitions. Unexpected and undesirable transitions that we find ourselves in at various points in our lives. It's about going from one thing to another. And sometimes we find ourselves in that. It's from one job to another, one church to another, one thing in life that we've had fairly stable and secure, 
But now we're not sure what the next chapter is going to look like. And a lot of life is about being in this land in between. And what I want to do today, very briefly, it won't be a long sermon, is look at uh, a situation from the Old Testament in the nation of Israel where the people had, had come out of Egypt. We had Joseph go into Egypt and he was able to rise to a position of influence there. The whole nation grew up around him, but as the leadership grew, they forgot about Joseph and his influence and they enslaved the Israelites there. And Moses led the people out of Israel. But instead of going straight to the promised land that God had promised them, the land flowing with milk and honey and all those sort of descriptions of it, God deliberately led them into a desert region. Now we know from our deserts, you know, sometimes you think of desert like Sahara, but sometimes in our Australian outback, all you need is a bit of rain and and the desert can actually become quite a flourishing uh, community there. There's all sorts of things that grow. And if we're in this transition, this thing between where we were and where we're going to, but we're not there yet, it feels like a desert, but it actually can be fertile ground for all sorts of things, good and bad. So let's have a look at this uh, account from the book of Numbers, and we'll read through it here. Numbers chapter 11 from verse 46. The foreign rabble... I love that description the Bible gives there, that rabble, the foreign rabble, as opposed to the local rabble. The foreign rabble who were travelling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. And we had all the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions and garlic we wanted. Our breath wasn't very good, but we could eat all that we wanted. Now our appetites are gone. All we ever see is manna. Now, if you know the background to the story, God had provided this manna. It was stuff that they picked up on the ground. Each morning they took a rest on the Sabbath, and the stuff would last for two days on the Sabbath over the weekend. But the rest of the time, they ate this manna. And it was good enough to eat. It sustained them, obviously, but they got sick of it. And with the, obviously, the food that they got used to, the variety of it, they started to complain. If you remember the old Keith Green song, those of you in that era... So you want to go back to Egypt. You know, eating leeks and onions by the Nile. They were the good old days. So we see out of that passage, the first point I want to make is this, that the land in between is fertile ground for complaint. When we are finished with one era of life and we haven't quite got into whatever is going to be the new normal for us, it is fertile ground for complaint. If we we believe that God has brought us here, whether that's been his will or not, we are where we are. It's easy to get into this habit of complaining about where life is now and maybe how somehow it was better back then. Now, I find it interesting that they actually, you know, complained about that and they'd, they'd forgotten they're actually in slavery. They're actually, you know, being really harshly beaten by the the Egyptians. The the sort of work that they had to do was very cruel. But sometimes when we're in that, we can sort of lose perspective about what life is like back there. Sometimes if we as Christians are in that sort of space mentally, it's fertile ground that we complain. And also seemed, as I joked there, was the foreign rabble who started it and then the people of Israel began to complain so we've got to watch the people we hang around with because when we're in this in-between time when we haven't got to the new normal if you hang around with the wrong people you know it just it just pile on stacks on you get you get the wrong sort of messages start to put in your head oh yeah this is pretty bad isn't it And on it goes, and you just start to build this up over and over again. 
We see in the New Testament when Jesus had been crucified and a lot of the disciples had just thought, this is it. You know, we had pinned our hopes on Jesus. He was going to be everything to us. And we betrayed him. And now he's alive. And there was almost a sense with some of the disciples that that's a bad thing because, you know, he's going to be so angry with us. So they just went back to what they knew. They went back to fishing. Jesus had called them out of that. He called them away from that. There was going to be a new thing. They were in an in-between land there themselves. But in not knowing what that future would be, Peter and those other guys who were fishermen, they went back to fishing. And we've got to be careful as Christians that we don't go back to where we were. Don't complain about what we've got and think that somehow that old life was better than it actually was. Let's keep reading from verse 10. Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tents, whining and whinging and moaning and complaining, and the Lord became extremely angry. But Moses was also very aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, Why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? He just goes on and on. I mean, it keeps going. Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them into the land you swore to give their ancestors? Where am I supposed to get meat for all these people? They keep whining to me saying, give us meat to eat. I can't carry these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. If this is how you intend to treat me, Lord, go ahead and kill me. Do me a favour and spare me this misery. My goodness. He's having a bad day, poor old Moses, isn't he? You ever feel like that? Boy, yep. Unfortunately, the land in between is also fertile ground for collapse. And that's what, you know, Moses... He had a few of these sessions like that where he felt that responsibility of leadership. You know, he led them out. He'd done what God had said. He'd followed the, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. He'd done what God had said. And once the foreign rabble started to get into the ears of the Israelites and they started to complain, Moses had just had this incredible collapse. Kill me now, Lord, I've had enough. Similar to what Elijah did in the Old Testament. I've had enough. Don't, don't let me go on. I can't stand this anymore. The thing was Moses was doing it by himself. He was, he was coping with the load on his own. And there is a sense in, in leadership where someone has to be the one that says, yep, yeah, the buck stops with me. I'm going to take responsibility for it. There has to be a time when people do step up and, and stand out from the crowd and say, yep, this is what we're going to do. But the burden of leadership, the burden of responsibility, the burden of what you're going through in your land in between is not something that needs to be handled by yourself, on your own, without anyone else. That's why we have the importance of the church community. That's why we say... You might be going through something, don't go through it alone. We want to stand together with you. That's, that's why we want to offer pastoral care and opportunities for people to, to not be alone when they're going through stuff because the land in between is fertile ground for collapse. And you can see Moses. It, it, you know, sometimes when the stuff happens, it, 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 it would have been bad, I'm sure. But sometimes when we get in this space... Problems get out of perspective. Stuff that happens to us, it, it's sort of overblown. And some things that happen can be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Let's keep reading. I said I'd be quick. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather before me 70 men who are recognised as elders and leaders of Israel. Bring them to the tabernacle to stand there with you. I will come down and talk to you there. I will take some of the spirit that is upon you and I will put the spirit upon them also. 
and they will bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. Now, God did this with Moses a couple of times. There was another incident when Jethro, his father-in-law, came and Moses was giving judgments to the people all the time. And it was an opportunity for Moses to learn, no, you, you can't do it all yourself. You need to spread the load. So as well as the land in between being fertile ground for complaint and collapse, the land in between is also fertile ground for growth. There were these people that had to step up. There were these people that, that needn't be part of the complaining group and should have been part of the group who were bearing the load along with Moses. They were the leaders in their tribes. They were leaders in, in the nation themselves. And they needed to develop the capacity, the, the, the wording in that was that God took some of the spirit that was with or on, upon Moses and put it upon the other people. And I think that's, that's one of the things, that's one of the challenges for us as, as a church is that there's growth that we need to be able to have in all of us to step up and not be part of the crowd who complains, but part of a leadership group who says, I will bear the burden, I will take some of that responsibility. There will be key leaders doing other things, but I will do what I can to play my part, to be a positive influence, and I will grow in that. I will feel uncomfortable, I will you know, feel like I'm out of my depth sometimes, but I will allow God to use this to help me to grow so that we can get through this. <coughs> So there's opportunities both ways when it comes to this fertile ground. When we're in between one thing and another, when we're out of one era but not quite in whatever looks like the new normal for you. And as Jeff Mannion writes from the, the book of the same name, the wilderness where faith can thrive is the very desert where it can dry up and die if we are not watchful. Our response to God while we're in the land in between is what will determine whether our journey through this desert will result in deep positive growth or spiritual decline. There's lessons that we learn in the desert that can't be learned on the mountaintop. We want the mountaintop. It would be great to be the mountaintop experiences. God seems close and everything seems wonderful. And there's lessons to be learned in that. But there's other lessons that we don't learn anywhere else except the desert, except when it's tough, except when it's hard. But our response to God in that time will determine how we get through that whether it will be a dry time for us, whether we will be in the band of com complainers and the rabble that's there, whether we will get stuff out of perspective and feel like we're going down with the ship, or whether we'll bring others around us to help us, or whether we will be one of those ones that we will grow, we will develop capacity through this, we will develop resilience to get through what we're going through. I mean, we're hoping 2021 will be very different and much better than 2020. But what if it's not? What if there's just as many challenges? What if there's still that land in between that we're not there yet? Hopefully it will, will be better and we pray that it will be. But if not, we need to learn the lessons that God is trying to teach us through this and respond to him in this land in between. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it has been a heck of a year, but thank you that we've come through it. We're here. Some people are tuning in online and listening to that, and we've, we've got through it. And we thank you for your help and your guidance in the middle of that. Lord, I pray you'd help us if 
if we feel like we're in that land in between at the moment, if we feel we're just out, out of one thing but we're not quite into the next thing yet and there's this no man's land that we, we feel we're not sure. It might be a job, it might be a relationship, it might be health. It might be just that phase of life that we're in about, about what's next and what will be the new normal. Well, help us in the middle of it, not to complain, not to think of the old days were better and maybe we'd be better off going, going back there. But, Lord, always looking forward with you. Help us to realise that there are people around us that, that want to help, that want to be with us, that stand with us at this time. And help us to stand out from the crowd, not, not be one of the rabble, but stand out and be those leaders that makes a difference, that helps bear the burden that we can go through together. So Lord, thank you for being faithful to us. Thank you for helping us through this. When we were here 12 months ago, we never would have thought we'd have to go through something like this. But thank you for being there and... And just as those people eventually got, well, most of them didn't make it, but got to that land. Lord, help us to get to whatever that new normal looks like. And that we would remember the lessons and not, not be doomed to repeat them along the way. To help us to learn them deeply in our mind, in our heart, in our soul. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.